This video is brought to you by Ugreen. Hello? Yep. We all know that the release of the new iPhone 16s and iOS 18 was introduced under the theme of Apple Intelligence. But you know what? Apple Intelligence is not here yet. But the new 16 Pro is. So at this point, I have only one thing to do. Spice up this bad boy, make it mine, and sprinkle my ultimate iPhone home screen setup principles with a fresh dose of what's currently out in iOS 18. What better way to do that than by taking you along for the ride, wiping everything clean, starting fresh, and loading up some of my favorite apps, widgets, shortcuts, and features you might want to take advantage of. This setup is a mix of Wuji, some standard apps, and stacks of widgets alongside the principles of eliminating redundancy. If you've been a long-time viewer, you'll know that I prefer keeping things condensed in just one home screen, having easy access to pretty much everything I use. As always, I'll have just one home screen, the app drawer on the right, and the widgets page on the left. This being a brand new phone might suggest that I'll simply transfer over everything by the means of a backup, but that's not me. I always prefer to set up each new device of mine as, uh, well, you know, new, because that way I have a chance to get rid of things I no longer use and improve on others. Upon going over the initial setup process, the first thing I did was to delete all default apps I won't be using. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to bulk select apps to delete them, so I have to play with the whole the app chasing game. At this point, the remaining apps had to be silenced and I disabled all notifications as I prefer to enable them individually as I use the iPhone down the line. The next step is to enter jiggle mode and remove all the apps from the home screens. Fortunately, as I had deleted plenty of the defaults, things are a lot more forgiving. Plus, there's an easy way to wipe clean everything as I can simply drag an app to a new screen only to hide and delete the rest of the screens. And yes, that lonely app can be deleted as well or placed anywhere for that matter thanks to iOS 18, something that I plan on utilizing. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? Now, before I get to building things from the ground up, there are two more sections that I need to take care of. The first one is the widget page, which totally needs to go, and the second is the control center. The way I see it, the control center for the most part is a complete duplicate of the home screen in terms of behavior. The difference is that I'm able to hold triggers, or controls as Apple calls them, and widgets of controls, which are like normal widgets, rather than apps and widgets. I not only have pages of controls I can deal with, which I'll of course delete for now, but similar to the home page, I can grab a control to resize it just like a widget. Boom. Now, at this point, things look super clean everywhere. On the home screen, the widget page, the app section, and the control center, except for the little search icon which is the siri search icon above the dock now this icon indicates that i can tap on it and start searching the iphone but i can easily do that by just swiping down anywhere on the screen which triggers the same action that means that this little search section here doesn't need to exist visually so in order for me to turn it off all i have to do is go to settings and find home screen and app library and at the very bottom it says show on home screen turn off exit boom super clean and tidy with all that initial maintenance taken care of it was go time as usual i prefer to go from the outside in so that meant tweaking the lock screen too since we now finally have the ability to change the default lock screen apps I can take advantage of that and I will replace the default camera app to the Final Cut camera one. That happens via the shortcut app, Open App. While here, I will also add a Lightroom camera app widget under the clock so that I can easily take Lightroom pictures. Now, in case you're wondering what's the purpose of all this, it's simple. Since I snap a lot of images and shoot video for the channel, 
I want to clearly distinguish everything work-related from everything personal, where the default camera app comes into play. Since both Final Cut and Lightroom organize everything outside the default Photos app, I can be sure my family gallery won't be clogged with work stuff. What's also great here with the new 16s is that I have a camera control mm, button, which is my go-to access to everything family related. You know, the camera control button is very handy, but it takes time to get used to it because I keep doing this and I've been doing this for over 16 years and I need a break. I need to get used to actually pressing this button here, which I think is turning out to be a very functional addition to the iPhone. Talking about functionality sprinkled with a massive dose of fun, let me show you the Ugreen Uno Charger 100 watts. This little robot inspired watt wizard packs a serious punch, 100 watts to be precise, fast charging the iPhone 15 Pro from 0 to 60% in 30 minutes, as well as all sorts of other tech and accessories. With three USB C ports and one USB A, it can juice up four devices at once and do that with a smile, which actually displays the charging status. And don't worry about overheating or overcharging, as there are eight levels of built-in safety protection. A more stationary and just as welcoming alternative is the Ugreen Uno 2-in-1 magnetic wireless charger. With its 15 watts charging abilities, it can top up the iPhone from 0 to 41% in 30 minutes. And on the back, there's also a 5 watt port for earbuds and additional port for an Apple Watch cable. Boasting robust N48H magnets, the Uno 2-in-1 stays firmly in place and that adjustable G2 charging station is ideal for standby mode. Check out Ugreen and their amazingly fast and fun Uno lineup of accessories in the first link in the description below. Before I move on, I had no choice but to get rid of the default wallpaper and place one of my own. Vintage Symmetry is one of my all-time favorites and I really wanted to build on top of it. So I put together this brand new pack that I called Crimson Symmetry. I'll be sure to link it in the description if you want to support the channel and spice up your own smartphone or desktop display for that matter. Moving on to the widgets page, things look a lot simpler than last time. Not only because I stopped wearing my Apple Watch, which made me get rid of my Apple Health stuff, but also because many other shortcuts and features can now live in new places, like the control center, which I'll get to in a second. This means no crazy stacks here. My listening section stays on the top, where I have my small YouTube music widget flagged by my audiobook Audible on the right. Below them, I have a ground news medium widget followed by my email clan's hey medium widget. At the very bottom, no scroll is necessary as I have my tick tick to do app in medium size. Before getting to the nitty gritty stuff on home screen, one section that I needed to desperately pay attention to was the control center. It looks cool all empty like that, but it was time for an upgrade. Now, by following my reachability philosophy, I will fully take advantage of the fact that I can place everything anywhere I want to and build things from the ground up with how easy it is to interact with each and every item one-handed. At the very bottom, I'm placing a now playing control in medium size as a backup to the notification one, which sometimes doesn't show up depending on what I'm listening to. Above it, my number one priority are the brightness and volume sliders, which are super easy to get to with iOS 18 and the freedom of placement. Right above them, I'm placing the focus control, finishing the top row left to right with screen recording, light and dark mode switcher, background sounds, which I always use at night, and the silent switcher, which will no longer live under the action button. Moving down again, I'm placing the default connectivity controls and below them, I now have the pleasure to have two shortcuts, which are important to me. The first one is my custom AirPlay shortcut, which I showed you how to build yourself last time. It allows me to broadcast whatever I'm listening to, to let's say the HomePods. The second is actually a built-in shortcut by my task app TickTick, which is a super convenient way to quickly add a new to-do. Next up in the list is setting up the dock. Things here are fairly simple. Aside from the phone app, which should absolutely always live there because it's a phone after all, I'm placing my browser of choice, which is Chrome and the settings app. I don't know about you, but the settings app is something that I always have to hop into on a daily basis so it deserves to live there. Finally, my notifications and social media folder on the very right. Aside from holding all socials, the purpose of this folder is to contain 
and showcase my red bubbles. Aside from messages, all other IMs are silenced because I prefer to stay sane. So my only way to know if there is a communication I need to worry about is to simply glance at the red bubbles. You should try silencing your socials that way. Just leave their red bubbles from the notification settings and you'll thank me later. At this point, it was time to pay attention to my one and only home screen. As always, I'm going to rely on a large widget widget, which will not only be plenty informative and interactive, but it will also push my other most used apps towards the bottom of the screen for one-handed use. The large widget widget in question I called Insight, and I'm super happy at how it turned out. Aside from a weekly calendar, I get to glance at today's forecast and also take advantage of some quick action buttons like the Notes app. Now, I know I'm going to be asked about this, so let me show you how you can customize the Insight widget to display the icons that you care about. I mean, the quick action icons right here. So, all you have to do is go into Widget, go inside the widget and tap on Edit Widget. And here, under the Today's section, you can expand that group of uh, items you can scroll down to apps expand that and here you'll see four icons and four tap action layers now those tap action layers determine what happens when you tap on that layer that sits above the icon so in my case I want to change the Apple music to YouTube music because I don't have Apple Music or I don't use it at this point. So first things first, I'll go to the image of Apple Music. I'll get inside. Under the second layer, which is the image, I'll tap on app icon and I'll look for YouTube Music. Now it might take a second for the icons to show up. Boom. I select YouTube Music and then I'll go back and I'll find the tap action layer for music. I'll tap on it and I'll tap on external action and instead of Apple apps I'll go to third-party apps and I'll scroll all the way down until I find YouTube music there it is go back here go back at the top to confirm the changes and now we can test it tap yes for the first time it's gonna ask you if you want to give it access to YouTube music yes open it it is as simple as that. Furthermore, if I want to see what the weather will be the next few days, I can toggle to the upcoming section and get on top of things. We made this widget background independent, by the way, so it looks perfect on the iPad as well. I'll link it below alongside my Crimson Symmetry wallpaper pack. Below the inside widget, in a stack, I had to place a calculator again, and this time I'm putting one from ND. They have pretty cool apps, by the way. I like this one in particular because I'm able to customize it according to the style of my home screen and colors, but I can go all vintage if that's how I feel. Below the large stack section, where I keep smart rotates and widget suggestions off by the way, I'm placing only four standard apps. Lightroom, Notion, my Google Photos app, which nowadays is my default, and the iOS gallery, which unfortunately I can't completely ignore as it's the gateway to Google Photos. Right next to the four apps, I'm placing another interesting stack, which consists of three widgets. Two of those widgets are actually my mini drawers, which I've tailored to my needs. The main mini drawer holds miscellaneous apps that are not of huge importance, but I might open throughout the day. Underneath, I have a second mini drawer that holds all my streaming services for TV shows and movies. Perhaps the widget that has triggered most questions in my recent iPad video is called Device Monitor 2. This little app is super useful and provides tons of information about the iPhone. The reason I initially installed it was to monitor my iPhone 15 Pro performance as my battery was draining crazy fast. You should definitely check it out. So what's left here is the action button, which some of your eagle eyes might have already written a comment about below. I am not leaving it default, of course. I am attaching a shortcut to it, which will allow me to open my favorite files menu. A super quick way to open my files right at the folder I need most. If you want to build a similar quick action menu yourself, 
sign up for my newsletter and be on the lookout for the next email on how to do this on your own time. Oh, and be sure to check out my favorite iOS 18 features video. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is Z, over and out.